Um, and then we go to our next guest um, and uh, give him a warm welcome, Abel, Ronald Lenas. <laughs> and also here, I must add, uh, originally in the PR of this event, um, Aaron Martin was named, and he couldn't make it, and then you were happy to fill in his place. Is, is that a correct? Uh, yes, that's correct, and I have no idea where he is. Um, he might be in Japan, he might be on his way over, I don't, I don't know. But uh, basically what we're going to talk about is TechRec, um, a, a new journal that we started um, a couple of months ago. And I'm the editor-in-chief, and um, Aaron is the managing editor. And uh, maybe to give it away a little bit already, this is about our hobby project. Your hobby project. And, and what is it that you do for a living then? What I do for a living is I'm um, a professor of regulation by technology at Tilburg Law School. Head of the Department of Law, Technology, Markets and Society, which is um, a very sizable uh, group of people working on the at the intersection of law, technology and society, unsurprisingly. And um, the reason, skipping over to why we entered the journal, so there are a lot of journals on the field of uh, technology regulation and law and technology and, and things. Most of them are uh, closed science, uh, they're behind paywalls. And that has been bothering me for, for a number of years uh, already. And at one point, given that I'm uh, restless, I'm impatient, I'm uh, a bit of an activist, I thought, OK, we can do better. So uh, let's, uh, we have a critical mass to, to launch a, a journal to support the, the, the foundation of that. Uh, of course, we need lots of other people uh, in, uh, to, to help us out with that. But we have the critical mass to, to maybe pull this off. And that led to, uh, to technology and regulation, and, and that's, you, yeah. you, you see the, um, yeah. and the foundations of that uh, behind us. Yeah. You, you brought some slides, some more than this? Uh, I, or some, I, 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 I don't know. know. Oh, it's just this one. Oh, uh, sorry, sorry about that. I thought you had yeah. No, no, no. Uh, this is, uh, so, so basically we're online only. Uh, paper is uh, 20th century or something. People have printers if they want to. Um, so that lowers sort of the, uh, the cost of, of running this entire thing. Um, we've decided to go for, uh, for one of the um, open access publishing platforms. So basically we pay a um, um, relatively small fee to, um, to the platform uh, that provides the infrastructure and the rest of it is uh, completely online. There are no fees for anyone. Uh, so, um, and that means that Aaron and I spend part of our free time on, on running this journal. Yeah. That is sort of one of the disadvantages at the moment. So it's about money. I mean, that has been raised already. Um, and we're discovering where we actually need the money for. Um, but so far, we've been, um, and, and of course, at, at the moment, we get help from, from university in, in terms of a small budget for getting this started. And then we'll have to figure out how to make this sustainable. And are, are you satisfied so far? Because you say, I'm an impatient man. Is it, is it going the way you, you think it should be going? or? Is it not going fast enough, or is it is it going already? Um, I'm impatient by definition, so it doesn't go fast enough. But let me give a couple of examples. So, so one of the things is that there is a really big journal in this field called Law Innovation Technology, which is a Taylor and Francis uh, journal behind a paywall. Uh, but it's kind of special because um, uh, apparently the Netherlands has a contract with this particular journal that our papers are open access, fully open access in the journal. And then you get interesting things. So uh, not that I'm a the really brilliant scientist here, but um, a couple of my papers that were on um, open access in that journal are in the top of the journal. So the top paper is in the absolute top. It has 14, uh, 14K downloads, which is, um, and, and then the second one, I, I, I made some notes. So the second one is uh, 7K uh, downloads. Um, so the, the top one was published in 2017, 7K is in 2018, 3K then in 2019. And then we go to papers which are not open access, um, a paper published in uh, 2015 that has 2,000 downloads. So you can clearly see, I mean, it's not me, it's the fact that it's fully open access that helps uh, create an audience and, and get uh, papers to people. Now, the interesting thing when, um, when, I, we, when we started the adventure was, um, I talked to the editor-in-chief of Law Innovation Technology, which is one of the big people in the field, and, and said, look, um, uh, we're going to do this. How do you feel about this? And, and he said, OK, this is fine. I'm, I'm, um, there is a, this is the time to, to start doing this. And actually, he wrote the opening paper for the journal. So we got this really big guy on board. 
And we launched the, the journal at the, um, uh, the Tilting uh, Conference earlier this year, which is a really big conference in, in this field. And we got a lot of uh, enthusiastic responses from uh, seniors that said, okay, we're on board of this, we're going to do, uh, we're going to submit papers for this, and then uh, others followed as well. And, and at the moment, we're, we're actually swamped in, uh, in, in submissions. Um, so we're lagging behind, and that's due to uh, holidays. So people, our reviewers are on holidays. Mm -hmm. Yep, they deserve that. So it's going a little slower than uh, we had hoped for, but we're getting there. So the it, it sounds like a success. It's partially a success. I mean, uh, my intention was to, so we launched in, in May this year. My intention was to have a couple of serious papers on, um, uh, online in, in September. We didn't make that, but next week um, we have one and then uh, a couple of others will, will, will follow. And, and did you also get uh, like emails or calls from people from completely different fields who said, oh, what you're doing, I want to copy, I want to take your template, your format, can you tell me more about that? Does it work as that as well? No, not, not yet, but I can imagine that that happens. So one of the things that we did, so we have this platform, but of course it's not, um, we also wanted to have um, a decent format. So we had a, um, a graphics designer do the, uh, the, 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 the template for the paper. So we have an InDesign thing that we, that we use. Uh, which has its own uh, issues, but um, so so that is, I think, what you need so that the, the quality of the printed stuff is is okay, Com uh, absolutely comparable with the classical journals, but it's way easier to, uh, to to make. The thing is that our graphics designer was like, okay, so you want to do a journal, and what they had in mind was like the glossies that we also have at university. No, 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 this is an academic journal. So we have footnotes, we have references, we have the whole shebang, and that was kind of difficult, and then. It turns out simple things like the abstract field is too small for what academics write in terms of abstract, so you have to force them to limited space, um, yeah, I, things like that. But those are simple things. Those are the simple things. Well, what's the hardest thing so far still for you? What, is that still a struggle or you think, well, I think I've done 90% of what, what, what has to be done for this to run? Um, I, I, I think we have the basic structure in place of handling things. And so one of the other things, and that's again my impatience, it takes far too long to get papers published. So I want to have that down to two months or something, start to finish. And that requires, that is a challenge for the core editorial team. I mean, um, Aaron and I have to read everything that comes in, then decide whether or not it is suitable for the journal, then we have to find somebody who, who, um, uh, who acts as a sort of, um, uh, there's a term for that that uh, escaped me. So uh, internally within our editorial team, who takes over then the process of finding re reviewers and etc. And then we have, uh, and but but the uh, one of the hard parts is that yes, we tell people this is the template that we use. So you have to do Oscola and 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 then you don't do any weird formatting and then you get papers and nobody understands what Oscola is. Mm -hmm. and, and so it, it really the the. Let, let's say the uh, the copy editing is is a challenge. Yeah, yeah. I'm also going. Yeah, question here. I, I saw the two of you laughing. Was that a private moment or something to share? No, that's that's yeah. something to share. Um, uh, often in discussions, we address that that there are work batch solutions to incremental solutions. So we keep hearing a lot of uh, yeah. potential solutions. And Hans and I were just laughing. I, we we will make our statement later on. Uh, but we think we have one integral solution to many of the. Uh, yeah. But I do have one question because one yeah. of the issues is like, hey, the role of money. It does sound like you had to invest quite some money. So where did you get the money from? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Every time we have an issue today, ladies and gentlemen, Dan is our answer. Dan is the one to talk to. No, no, we got a, a little um, um, seed money too, and that basically goes to the to the platform, which is like fifteen hundred euros or something. And and part of um, Aaron's time is being paid for by uh, for getting this done. But ultimately, I mean, we need, um, so we need to probably hire somebody to do a part of the copy editing and, and, and also language correction, for instance. And, and that's where the money goes. I mean, um, we all do, um, all the academics in the room uh, review papers for journals, right? So we, and we do it a lot. So that is partially one of the, the challenges, of course, is that although I have a big team, everybody's involved in reviewing for everyone and his horse. Uh, partially, we have to, 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 to look after our own journal without making it our entirely our thing. So, uh, so, so in, in, in a sense, the burden increases on, on the people within my group, uh, but hopefully uh, uh, enough other people will come on board as well. 
question here, sorry. Uh, I think you should find a, a good publisher which isn't too expensive because you, you're an academic and you're doing things which shouldn't be your job. Um, I, I, I really like the idea that you started it out. But make, I, I'm not sure how many articles will you be publishing, do you think? Yeah. A year? We're, we're aiming at. Yeah, we're aiming. Yeah, it, it doesn't work so far. Yeah, press it. Uh, how many articles? 15 or something yeah. a year. And is this a good idea? Is this something you're thinking about? Because this is not your core business. Maybe find a publisher. They might even take this further than you are. Def define publisher. I mean, it depends on... Saskia. Yeah, no, no. I, I mean, it would be great to have Saskia. No, no, but it, it's like, so So, what, what What do you want these people to do? I mean, if it's... Yeah, what, what, what can they do that he doesn't do? No, but actually, it's the organization and technique, te technical side, which you are doing now and which takes time. And uh, if you, and, I mean, are you aware of U, U, U Open in Utrecht, which is a sort of publisher within the library? They have a contract with Ubiquity Press, which is a publisher who has a platform and they organize it all for you. And if you have 1500 euros, well, it, it, that would be enough for five or six articles. If you do 20, you need twice as much. Yeah. It's not that much more. Yeah. Yeah. So are you aware of this initiative? I, I changed the yeah. Yes, I am. Uh, but we, we consciously made a step not to do that and, and go for, for a platform that does all the infrastructure for us. So the, the whole reviewing process and whatever is, is completely streamlined within the platform. So, so basically, it, it, it's really the, the effort is in getting reviewers to do uh, review the papers, which is normal, which we always have, and then the final step is getting it from a Word file into InDesign. That that's where 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 the, where the, the challenge is. And, and and apart from that, I, uh, I I don't see any need for 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 a publisher actually. All right. Any other questions or remarks? I think from the others. <coughs> what were you smiling again? Oh no, uh, the idea that he doesn't need any publisher. Yeah. Um, is that naive? Maybe for for the field it, it works, yeah. um, but I think like your arguments about why publishers can be helpful yeah. is also relevant. So I think it's an ecosystem, and we sometimes yeah. need each other, and sometimes we can do without, and sometimes we, yeah, help. yeah. <coughs> yeah. It's an no, ecosystem. Okay, so and that's coming back to something uh, Saskia said before. Of course, one of the uh, the big, I mean, in the, the the list of questions that we got uh, prior to this was okay. What what do you see as the um, uh, as the sort of the uh, where, where are we uh, right now? You, you can pick your own questions. Which one would you like? <laughs> yeah. So, things, so, so what are the um, um, uh, prejudices against um, open access and, and things? So I, I mean, I, I don't know if it's a prejudice, but of course reputation is in incredibly important. And what publishers so far have done has, is this really clever plot in, in a sense that there is a link between publishers and editorial boards and, and they depend on each other and then we as simple scientists depend on the reputation that that system has and that's incredibly difficult to change and, and even uh, um, uh, scopers and, and, and impact factors etc that's all part of this whole thing because the, all the impact factor things are run by the same publishers that keep us locked in. And um, so I'm, I'm, I'm not overly optimistic that we can change that whole system um, uh, soon, or well, we have to t take s small steps. And I'm, I'm trying to leapfrog and, and make bigger steps in a sense. But of course, we need to have uh, we have um, um, we have to be on lists uh, where where uh, I mean, the, uh, young scientists may think they don't care about impact factors, but they do as soon as they apply for a position higher up in the food chain. So we need, we need to have reputation that is partially dependent on, on editorial boards and, and un unfortunately it's also tied at the moment to, to publishers. Yeah. See nothing as well? <coughs> it's correct what she's saying? Yeah, I do think that we do care about uh, impact factors, even yeah. though that impact factor in itself is a very questionable thing, um, the way it is calculated and whether it actually makes sense. Yeah. But um, in the end, I mean, we all want a job or like, let's say yeah. most of, I'm just speaking generally for uh, the junior researchers now. <laughs> yeah. um, I think at some point it would be nice to have a job where uh, you don't worry about being unemployed in two years down the, uh, the road. So if you want one of those, at the moment the game is that you have to um, have publications that are in places that are well respected. Yeah. And um, I would really hope for that to change. But yeah. while it hasn't changed yet, um, yeah, I think. And, and, and who's in charge of that change? Where, where, where do we start? Because you say, I'm, I'm taking a big leap, I'm doing <coughs> what I can, what, what else can we do? So um, I'm, I, I don't want to like, shove the blame to people, but I do think that the seniors uh, or the, the yeah, uh, 
um, less early career people are uh, in charge of changing hiring criteria, yeah. uh, changing uh, criteria for uh, who they would like to employ, and then actually living by it and hiring people who do good work and not necessarily work as great. So we need more Ronald? Always. We need more Saskia? <laughs> because I'm overburdened, so I can, I can use a, a double. No, but I, I think one, I think, um, so impact factors are one thing, but I think um, number of downloads, for instance, is, is an important thing that is independent on, on where things are. And I, I think in, in our field, um, SSRN, and, and many people will know about that, is, a, is an incredibly important platform where you have, basically, you can put everything on there, you see the number of downloads. Unfortunately, SSRN is owned by Elsevier at the moment, so... Um, I don't know, um, uh, but but yeah. So there, but we need to change the entire landscape. But if if we talk about change, I think one of the remarks I hear here is that um, you have more prestige. You're a professor. If you change something, if you say something, it will have more impact than the younger generation. So can you maybe encourage other? Uh, older colleagues, how to say? No, that, that's what we're doing, and and and, and I see um, um, uh, I see an interest of more established people within my field of, of exactly doing that. So we realize that we're in a locked-in situation where, where things, and that we need to change. And, and I mean, uh, Roger Brownsworth as, as writing the opening chapter for, the opening paper for the, for the journal is a, is a prime example there. He, he doesn't care anymore where, where he's published, but he helps us establish a name so that others can, can, can join us in, in, in this. Yeah, two questions <laughs> from the audience over here. Yes. Hi. Um, well, I think this point you're making up about being like overburdened and things are not going fast enough and it has to happen in two months, etc. Mm -hmm. This kind of, yeah, this acceleration of society in general and people burning out. I, I see a lot of people like involved in do-it-yourself organizations and stuff like that yeah. burning out, right? Um, so, and now I was thinking there's also such a thing as a slow science movement, right? Uh, I'm not sure if you know anything about that. Yeah. Um, I know Isabel Stengers from uh, Brussels University is in, involved in that. Um, yeah, so just uh, this idea, like, should, it, should there be like an interesting collaboration between open and slow? Those two might help each other, like yeah. make each other bigger, make each other better. Yeah? Can you answer that question? It's, it's on. Should yes, yeah. sure, I, I, I fully realize that, but on the other hand, so the, uh, I, I'm not I'm not aiming to have uh, people work harder or, or anything or, or um, uh, increasing the number of burnouts or things, but, but in, in our field, which is law and technology, it's incri incredibly frustrating that you have done slow science in a sense, you work long on, on a particular paper, then you submit it to a journal, and then it takes up to a year to get it in print. Mm -hmm. Come on, that's not 21st century. So yeah. that's why I want to bring down the... Um, uh, because it's, it's, it's not the amount of time spent actually on the production of things, it's, it's lying on desks waiting for something to happen. And that is something that we can speed up by, by doing things in parallel, by, by having platform, platform support, etc. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to do with, with decreasing the, uh, the, the period between submission and print. Yeah. Happy with that? Thanks. Fair enough. Um, so first of all, I applaud the initiative. I think it's uh, you're making yourself more work. So uh, I mean, that, that that takes courage to do. Um, I wanted to ask how university supports you. This university supported you in that initiative, and how it acknowledged that you are also increases their reputation besides giving you just yeah. small budget to do it. Because you know it's nice to have, but I'm, I'm, uh, I, what I want to ask is did this these kind of things really change in my mindset because what we were mentioning, the impact factors, they are the ones that create policy for hiring. Yeah. So if they have this and support it, that's very good. But if they turn around and then still apply the same old policy while when hiring, then um, I mean, it's, it's a little bit then window dressing. And I mean, I mean really honestly. Yeah, so uh, ma many questions there. So, so one of the things, uh, and that is one of the reasons why the university supports this, this initiative, is to see whether we can do this and then use that as a model for others to, to also follow. So we're, we're building experience with the platform, with running this, what it actually costs to do it. And um, so, so I'm very grateful for university for doing this, but it's not entirely. So, so we, th there is an agenda here, and, and uh, Dan has mentioned that already. So we want to try and push this forward. And I think, and that was one of the reasons why I got into this, that I feel that we're talking about public money here. We have, and, and in my view, we have a responsibility as a university to, to help 
foster uh, open access. So, so that's why we're in this, and I think that this is also supported by university. On the other hand, in, in, in terms of hiring, I am one of the people hiring people. So I have to eat my own dog food, right? So, and that's what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm very, um, very aware of, of, of a number of the issues, at least, that, that young, uh, young scientists have. And uh, I mean, over the last two years, I've, I've done, I think, 200 job interviews or something for, for hiring over 20 people. And, and so we look at where people publish and what, what they run up against. Yeah. Happy with that? So yes, I, thank yeah. you. Thank you for that. Any other questions from the audience or remarks? And also for you, things you wanted to say? Have you said anything? Yeah. I'm good. You're good? Thank you got a very big round of applause. Thank you very much, Ronald Lainers and Michiel de Jong.